Welcome back to our Prop 208 debate. The Invest in Education Act on your ballot. It would funnel more than $800 million into K-12 schools, paid for by a tax increase on high-wage earners, 3.5% surcharge on taxable earnings above $250,000 for individual, and it's the same 3.5% surcharge on taxable earnings above $500,000 for married couples. Let's start with Kevin McCarthy of the Arizona Tax Research Association. Association on the no side, you are taking aim at the tax increase. Uh, earlier, you made the case for the business impact. I'd like just a little more information on, on, on the small businesses that are being affected. That's a centerpiece of the, of the no side's campaign. One of the claims is that 50% of the payers will be small businesses. Make that connection for voters from tax on high wage earners to a tax on small businesses. Sure, thanks, Fred. What, what a, some uh, average voters and taxpayers may not understand is, is that many uh, businesses in Arizona choose to organize uh, in such a way that they are pass, what we call pass-through entities, limited partnerships, LLCs, um, subchapter S corporations that pay taxes. The, the entity, the business pays its taxes through the personal income tax. So the authors of this uh, initiative thought it wise, I guess, to have a tax on one form of business, a small business paying on individual income taxes at 8%, when the corporations in Arizona will pay taxes at 4.9%. The taxes, the, and so the key impact of this from a economic development standpoint, in addition to the the unfair and disparate treatment between small businesses paying an individual income taxes versus corporations is what's the impact going to be on small businesses? How will they react to a 78% shock in the top marginal uh, rate? Our, our economists that studied this said that in the, over the first 10 years, this will shed uh, 124,000 jobs and will decrease, uh, ironically, to my initial point, and decrease state and local revenues by $2.4 billion, which is the last thing you would want to do when you're increasing taxes is to actually change behavior to the point that you're actually decreasing revenues in other areas, which, which this uh, proposal will most certainly do. Okay, I want to go to David Lujan. Uh, David Lujan, you said in a recent debate, quote, small business owners won't pay one cent more in additional taxes. How is that correct given what Kevin McCarthy just said? The small business entities themselves will not pay a single cent more. It's legally impossible. This is only changing the individual income tax rate. And only individuals pay on the individual side. You know, it, I've been talking to a lot of small business owners lately, and, and a lot of them are just kind of like scratching their heads at our opposition's claims because they said that the what, only 1% of the wealthiest Arizonans will be taxed by Proposition 208. And they all consistently say, we make nowhere near that kind of income to be taxed. And that makes sense because according to the, the Small Business Administration, the average income for a small business owner in Arizona is $48,000 a year, well below the thresholds. And, and so if you're fortunate enough to be an individual who's in the wealthiest 1% and you get some of your income from business, but that means that you're you're making over five hundred thousand dollars a year in taxable income on your personal individual income, and, and you know Kevin should know this. He talks about the corporate rate. Our corporate rate is a flat four point nine percent rate. Our income tax rates are graduated. So that means if somebody's in the top one percent, they pay a portion of their income at, at a rate of as low as two point five nine, all the way up to four point five percent, and and so. With Invest in Ed, Arizona will still have, for the people in the top 1%, will still have a lower effective tax rate than the national average and lower than a majority of the other states. And so it's just simply not true to say that this is going to hurt small businesses. Most of the small business owners I've been talking to are enthusiastically supporting Proposition 208 because they know that this is going to put more money into the pockets of school district employees who've had their wages cut, and it's going to help our future workforce. This is good for business. It's good for our economy. 
Uh, over to you, Kevin McCarthy. And I have to tell you, whenever I've covered business for many years, when I hear small business, a lot of folks don't know. That could include some pretty large businesses. And a, ta a tax foundation study uh, recently found 10% of those pass-through businesses nationally account for 50% of the taxes. So these many of these small businesses are quite large, aren't they? Yeah, well, I'm, you, you stole one of my lines, Bram, but the, that's exactly the case. Of, of those impact, 50% of the affected entities with this tax are small businesses, but way more importantly, 90% of the revenue from them comes from businesses that are filing taxes in these categories to over 250,000 and 500,000. And every dollar that's taken out of their profits will impact one of two things. It'll impact employee pay, employee expansion, or capital expansion of the entity. For anybody to argue that this is magic money that's free to be for someone, for government to come in to take, and it not only won't affect the small business, it won't put the uh, the owner of that small business in a more disadvantageous is is um is 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 naively trying to mislead people okay we but have to end it i got I think, I, dave i'm sorry I, I, try to pick that up in the next segment segment i've got to end it there when we come back why an independent analyst warns it can only speculate about the money prop 208 would deliver to k-12 schools stay with us i'm martha mcsally at 12 i lost my dad at 17 i became a survivor and at 18, I was told girls can't be fighter pilots. Then I became the first woman to fly a fighter jet in combat and help lead the air war after 9-11. America faces serious challenges, but we will overcome them. I approve this message because if you want flashy, you've got a guy. But if you want a fighter, I'm your girl. Every 40 seconds, someone has a stroke, starting a countdown to save a life. But Mark Kelly's liberal health care scheme could close hospitals across Arizona, leaving patients nowhere to go. Kelly's hospital closures would have life or death implications, kill health care jobs, and raise taxes over $2,300 a year. More taxes, less health care. We can't afford Mark Kelly. Senate Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertisement. I served as an intelligence analyst locating roadside bombs and IEDs, and they were really just cutting through up armored Humvees that we were driving at the time. One day I saw this new vehicle that looked like, you know, it would survive anything. It's what they call an MRAP, a mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicle. And so it was so much safer for our, our troops in Iraq. And I found out that this senator that I really had never heard of, named Joe Biden, was the one who was responsible for getting these MRAPs to Iraq, for pushing this through when many said, we don't want to do this. Joe Biden said, look, this is going to save thousands of lives and limbs, and it's worth every penny that we spend on them. Joe Biden knows how to work with everyone, Democrats or Republicans, to get things done. He did this for our service members. Joe Biden knows what military families go through. He knows what it's like to send a child to war. When Joe Biden's commander in chief, he will put the safety of our troops first. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. How much money would Prop 208 deliver to Arizona schools? The Capitol's independent budget analyst, which looks at every initiative and its financial impact, says it would be about $827 million in the first year, but that revenue is speculative. Let's talk about that with our guests on the yes and the no side. Uh, the JLBC, Joint Legislative Budget Committee, puts the revenue at $827 million. Um, why would that go up? Why would that go down? David Lujan. Well, you know, all, all tax revenue sources can be speculative, but what Proposition 208 does is it gives more districts certainty in budgeting than they would have in two, 20 years. And that's because it puts the money separate from what the politicians at the Capitol cannot touch, because that has where all the uncertainty has come from school district budgeting. I'll give you just a quick I, example. I, 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 I want to get to Kevin McCarthy's response, if I can, because, uh, as I warned you, the segment's going to be short. Uh, okay. Kevin McCarthy, what could go up and what could go down that makes that number so speculative? Well, this they've chosen quite unwisely to try to uh, soak more money out of the most volatile aspect of our entire state tax system. This, this uh, upper bracket in Arizona State personal income tax system shed 30% of revenue in one year. 
in the Great Recession. I can't think of a more volatile area to try to tap into. This is this has nothing about trying to provide stability. This is an effort uh, at political class warfare, I guess, but it's not about pro providing stability to K-12 schools for funding. What about the potential tax impact, as the JLBC notes, of putting more money in school employees' pockets through raises? That would result, they say, in higher sales tax and income collections. Could that offset the, any potential loss? Well, our, our analysis, economic analysis, uh, says any, anything that they would gain there is far eclipsed by the damage that's going to be done to the broader economy through the impact of the, the higher rates. The, what these uh, folks didn't take into account was we now at the at the federal level cap state and local tax deductions at $10,000 for decades. Small businesses and high income earners got to write off all these taxes on their federal income tax. That's over. So the impact of high personal income tax rates in state governments fundamentally changed overnight with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And that, that they haven't even begun to factor that in and what kind of long-term damage this is going to do. David Lujan, last word, 15 seconds, please, on this topic. Well, I, the, this is a stable revenue source because in this current economic crisis, we've seen that the people at the top 1% are actually faring better than the other 99%. So this just economic crisis, as an example, shows it's a very stable revenue source. All right, thanks so much. When we come back, we will wrap things up with some viewer questions and more. Stay with us. Vice President Mike Pence, Senator Kamala Harris, the two face off. But what does it mean for Battleground Arizona? 12 News has in-depth coverage you can only see here. Decision 2020 and the vice presidential debate, Wednesday on 12 News.